Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Today I thought we'd do the little painting that you see at the beginning of the show, the one that's got the little character that walks in the snow. I'll show you how that one was done. But first, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got done up here. I started with a regular old 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. Took a piece of contact paper and I just cut a shape out that sort of, in my mind, resembles a window. That's all. Then we took some masking tape and just made a couple of little doers with masking tape up and down like that. We've covered the entire thing then with a very thin coat of liquid white just to make it wet and it's ready to go. So let's just have some fun today. Let's start out today with a, let's start with a little bit of the midnight black, just a small amount on the old two inch brush and a little Prussian blue. Just mix them together on the brush, it doesn't matter. Little of each. All right, let's go right up here. And we'll start up in here just making our normal little crisscross strokes, little X's and just paint right over the top of the masking tape and everything. Just paint right over it like it's not even there. Because if you were looking out the window, the little cross members in the window would be in front of whatever you've seen anyway. So just paint it on. Maybe a little bit in here, wherever, wherever. There, a little more of that color. We'll put a little bit up in here, like so. Just make the little X's though, and it'll blend with the liquid white that's on the canvas. And automatically your color will just blend together. There we are. Something about like that. Now then, we can just blend that. See there's spots that are lighter than other spots. And we leave those in there intentionally. And you could go back with a little titanium white if you wanted to and brighten those little spots. In fact, I tell you, why not wash the brush and do that, just to show you. But you can make those little spots as bright as you want them. Just shake off the brush <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. Let's take just a little bit of white. Maybe right up in here we'd want a, a little brighter area. It's up to you. And you can just take the white and drop it in. Maybe even one up in here. But that's all there is to it. Okay. Now then, this won't be an exact duplicate of what you see at the opening of the show, but it'll certainly show you how that one was made. All right. Now, let's take, use that same old color, it's working pretty good. Black, Prussian blue, and white. And we'll just mix them together. Mix them together. I want to make a light blue color here. Something. That's getting pretty close right there. You just sort of mix it till it's the flavor that you like. And I sort of like that. So let's wipe off the old knife. I think I'll grab number three fan brush since that's what I picked up. Load it full of paint. And let's go right up here. We have a little tree that's far away. So touch. Now this time we're gonna push upward. Sometimes we push downward with a brush to make little evergreens. Today, I'm going to push upward. Go right over the masking tape, just like it wasn't there. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Something about like that. Now then. And, 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 there, yep, there's one right there. But just put these little trees wherever you think they should live in your world. There we go. I like making little trees like this. They're a lot of fun but just push upward. You're making the bristles bend toward the top of the tree. There we are. Something about like that. Push in some little bushy things. Same basic way, we're just pushing upward with a brush. Okay. And that's basically how we made the little background trees. You could take the knife and you could put a little stick or twig. Maybe there's a little tree there that maybe he not doing so well, he doesn't, maybe he doesn't have any leaves on him, just old stalk sticking out there. Maybe there's a couple of them, I don't know, wherever you think they should be. Just drop them in, that easy. But you want these just a little bit darker than the sky, don't get too crazy. Now then, let's take that color and we'll just lay it over here for the time being. Might use it later, who knows. Prussian blue, black, crimson, Throw a little 
there's red and crimson in there. We'll mix this up a pile of dark color. We're going to make some dark trees later on, so we'll have that ready. Now then, since this is a winter scene, we had snow in it, because I remember the little guy, he walked around in the snow back here. Now, believe it or not, the little guy was me too. It's hard to see. All right. Now, let's have a little bit of snow right here. See there? That easy. Just pull it across. Snow is one of the easiest things to paint in this technique. There we are. There we are. That's simple. Old two inch brush will do it in a heartbeat. Okay. Shoot, let's build a bigger tree. And for that, I'm going to get a bigger brush. I'm going to go to number six. But you could continue to use a number three. It doesn't matter. Just a little faster with this one. All right. We have another tree in our world. Yeah, it is right there. Same thing, though. I want to give it an upward push. There. It's got some of them upstanding limbs in here. There we go. This one's very dark. Pure color. There. Same color as the other one, but without the white. Minus the white, that's all. And maybe it comes down to about there. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Take the knife. I'm just scratching a little indication of a trunk in there. I have several fan brushes going. So I'm going to take another one, put some liquid white, some titanium white, mix them together. Liquid white's in there only to make the paint a little thinner because you know our golden rule. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. All right, then we'll go up in here and with this phthalo blue and white, we'll just put the indication of some highlights on this little tree, little sparklers. That'll make that rascal stand out. There. I'm going to grab a one-inch brush, use some of that same dark color. And we had a little bush lived right here. There he comes. Just push in a basic shape. That's all we're looking for here. Just a very basic little shape. About like that. See? But leave some of that background in there. It helps create the illusion of depth and distance in the painting. I'm going to dip the brush into liquid white and pull it in one direction, one direction, to load it. Liquid white and then through the titanium white in one direction. Look at the end of the brush. A lot of paint on it. Probably the biggest mistake made is not enough paint. Let's go up here. Now with that, we can come up in here and we can put some little snow-covered bushes right under that tree. There. If you had trouble making that stick, add the least little touch of liquid white to do it. There we are. Because it needs to be thinner than what's on the canvas. If the thinnest paint's on your canvas, it'll come off and go on your brush. If the paint on the canvas is thinner than the brush, it's most important. You want the paint on your brush to be thinner than what's already on the canvas. That way, the canvas will literally pull the paint off. It'll take what it needs, just like a tax man. There we go. Come right in here. And we'll pull that down. We'll create a whole other plane in this painting just by doing that. Intentionally grab a little bit of that blue. It makes gorgeous little shadows automatically. Automatically. There. All right. Now, you ready for a big tree? We'll just use the old fan brush. Load it full of the dark, dark color. Let's go up in here. Make your decision. Whew, might as well just do it. Might as well just do it and start pushing upward. We're going to create a monster tree here. A big tree. There he comes. Just keep pushing up. Think about individual limbs and branches, little arms on the tree. My little squirrels have to have a place to go. In the wintertime, they get sort of cold. They have to go up here and build them a nest. Sort of take life easy. There we are. Something about like that. When I said big tree, I wasn't kidding. I forgot how big that tree was in that painting. But isn't that little opening neat with a little guy walking back here? That little, little opening is the idea of one of my very good friends here at the station, Jerry Morton, who's one of the 
engineers that puts all this together. He comes up with those. There we are. I don't know where he gets all of his ideas, but they, they are neat. I'm gonna put another one right here. All right. I like that little painter guy. For many years, I've wanted, I've wanted to take the little painter guy and, and do, do a show with him. Let him do all kinds of things. And maybe in the very near future, we can do something like that. I've had some fantastic people ask us to come to Branson, Missouri and, and do a little show with the painter man. So maybe we'll do that. If you're there, stop by and say hello. Love to talk to you. Just taking and pulling that out like that. And off we'll go. There. Now then, find my little brush. It's got the thalo blue on it. Little thalo blue, little white, little liquid white. You know that we want it thinner, so it'll stick on there. Thalo blue, titanium white, liquid white. See, brush is loaded both sides. Let's go up here, and we'll come right in here. I use the thalo blue because we use Prussian blue in the sky, and I want it to stand out. And it sort of makes evergreens look like blue spruce trees, which I love. When I lived in Alaska, I had a huge blue spruce that lived in my front yard. Gorgeous tree. Absolutely one of God's most beautiful creations. There we are. Darker, darker, darker down here toward the bottom. Less and less. And this one back here in the back. I don't want a whole bunch. It's too far back. I don't want him to be real important in this painting. The quiet little tree. There we are. All right, now then, in our little painting that you saw at the beginning, we had a couple of huge birch trees, so let's do those. We'll take Midnight Black, and there's a little blue in there, but it's mostly black, mostly Midnight Black. Let's put a little Van Dyke Brown in it, too, about like that. Pull it out flat, cut across, get a little roll of paint. There you can see it, right down to the edge of the knife. Okay, this really is your bravery test. We're going to start way down here, and we're just going to begin working up. Right across the tape, right across everything. Just let this tree go all the way out of the top. Whew. When I said big tree, I was serious, wasn't it? It is a big tree. But they're a lot of fun to make. And if you don't want the tree in your world to be quite that big, make him a little smaller. Totally and completely up to you. Any size you want him to be. All right. I like big trees because they reach right up to the sky. Nearly touch the sun. All right. Well, not quite. If I remember, the, somebody said the sun was about 93 million miles away. I guess the tree's not quite that tall. But he's a big tree. Oh, right through my evergreen. But we know he's back here. We know he's back here. And we learned how to paint him. So it's not, it's not wasted. Anytime you learn, it's not a wasted effort. There. And I like, I like to paint birch trees and other kind of trees too. That when the paint is dry, you can literally feel the bark. Just like a real tree. Now, let's take, go back to our titanium white. I'm just going to use straight titanium white. And I want to touch and sort of give it a, I'm exaggerating, a round pull. Touch and sort of give it a, and it makes the tree look round. And those old square trees, they're sort of rare. You need to, need to make your tree have a round look to it. Boy, it'd be nice if they come square, wouldn't it? You'd just cut two by fours off of them without even running them through the mill. There we are. Big old birch tree. There. And this one. Now I've decided this one's in the front. So we'll do him last. Always do the thing that in your mind is the farthest away. And then work forward, forward, forward. There. These are fun. 
I like to make old birch trees. When I lived in Alaska, I used to do a lot of paintings for the tourists there. And they always wanted birch trees and northern lights. Mm. Of course, that's sort of what Alaska's noted for, I guess. And they were a lot of fun to paint anyway, so I didn't mind. There, a little dark in there. About like that. And you can just keep playing back and forth and building this up until it gets to any degree of thickness or color that you want. There. Of course, you can piddle it to death, too. All right. Let's take our liner brush, paint thinner. Put quite a bit of paint thinner up here. And let's make some thin paint, and we'll paint some arms on these old trees. Got to have an arm on him. But doesn't have any leaves. Got too cold. Leaves chickened out, and they went south for the winter. There we are. But there, just the paint thinner will allow you to flow the paint flow right off the bristles, right onto the canvas. If you have trouble making it flow, add a little more paint thinner. This one seems to be working pretty good, so we'll just keep on going with it. There we are, big old arm. We can come back and put a little highlight on it, maybe even a little snow. But just pretend that the tape's not even there. Just let the, let the branches grow the way they would grow if the tape wasn't there. Don't worry about it. When we pull that off, it'll, it'll make it look realistic. All right. See? And this is where I get letters from people, and they say, Bob, I don't think I can paint. I've got a little nervous twitch in my hand. This is your painting, because if you have a little nervous twitch, it really works better doing these tree branches. I have, I have youngsters in their 90s who write me and tell me that they never believed that they could paint, and they're doing it. And they're doing it every day. It's fantastic to hear success stories. There we are. So the tree over here says he needs a limb too. Now this tree we decided was in the front, so his arm will go right over the top of the other one. So let's just start him right here, and he'll go or, 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 distinctly over. That makes him look like he's in the front. Don't want him to get angry at us. Nothing worse than a mad tree. All right. Oh. And maybe here's one that goes off that way. We don't know where it goes. Don't know that it even matters in this particular painting. You could just put arms wherever you want them. I'm going to clean the brush and just dip it into a little bit of the liquid white. This is just liquid white. And maybe we can come back in here and there and there and here. Just put the indication that there's a little snow sitting in some of these places on here. Something about like that. But isn't that neat? That's all there is to it. Okay, and with that, it gives us a pretty good little tree. Down here at the bottom, grab a fan brush. Put a little liquid white on my brush, titanium white. And let's go down in here. Grab a little of that color, and we'll put a little snow right down there. There, we got a little of that color. I want the color in there for a shadow. Something about like that. Okay, we can pop in the indication of a little bush. See, that easy. All right. Now then, over here, we had a little fence. So for that, I'm going to take a little... Van Dyke, a little dark sienna, mix them together. And right here just lives what remains of a little old fence. It's about gone. There, something about like that. Come back with our one inch brush. Let's put a little bush on his foot. Just a little bush lives down in here. Something like that. Liquid white, and we'll go through titanium white. Same as we did before, maybe a little blue on that one because there's white behind it. We need to separate just a little of the thalo blue on it. A little snow-covered bush lives right there. A little bit of the titanium white, pull that out a little. And that easy. Shoot, we got that rascal in there. 
Now, while I have liquid white and titanium white mixed together, I want to put the indication, if you're looking out the window, on the old windows supports here that there's a little snow that has just collected in here. This is a gorgeous painting to give as a Christmas present. See, you can just put it on right there like that. We'll have some up here. Go right over the tree branches because this would be in front. There. But this paint's a little thinner. It's got liquid white in it. And maybe it's on all of them here. And here's one right here. Just put a little bit right in there. A little more of the liquid white. Brighten that one up a little bit so it shows. All right. Even a little down here on the bottom. What the heck? Just a tiny bit. Something about like so. All right. Now yeah, let's take us a script liner brush. Dip it in a little paint thinner. And we can go around and here and there and there and here. Put in a few little sticks and twigs and just little things that look like little finished details in your painting. There. See, just a happy little old stick it lives out there. And some little weeds around the fence. Shoot, maybe there's still even an indication of a little, little wire hanging on some of those. Not much. Tell you what, I'm going to take some white and a little touch of dark sienna. A little white, a little dark sienna. Cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go right up in here. And let's just, let's highlight this so it stands out a little bit more. Oh yeah, that's much better. Sort of rest in there. We want it to pop out. There we go. Now, looks more like an old fence. I can go back and put a few more little sticks and twigs in here. Maybe there's one down here. A wiggledy one. Let your, let your hand just sort of jerk around a little bit. Make all them little weird sticks and things. Because they're always there. They sort of stick up through the snow. Wherever you want them to be. We got a second left here. Maybe I'll put just a little more detail on some of these limbs. Because I like to have a lot of little, little sticks and twigs on mine. what makes it interesting. If you try this painting, take your time and do a photograph and send us. I would love to see what you're doing. And, and every so often we put them together and put them on a little board and we show them on TV so you can see what people all over the country are doing with this. And there's some that are fantastic and some that are better than that. It's just wonderful that people have so much success in painting. There. All right. Okay, we're about to get this little devil finished here. Just figure out where you want little sticks and twigs and any old where. There's some right in there. Okay. I think we're about to the point we can take the old contact paper off and see what we got here. So we'll bring the camera up here and pull this off. Isn't that fantastic? It does look like you're looking out a window. It is. But as I say, it's a very simple little painting that you can do. Try it, because I really think you're going to enjoy this one. It's sort of different. It makes a beautiful gift to give to friends and relatives, especially, as we mentioned earlier, around Christmas time. And no one appreciates a gift more than one that you produce with your own hand. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless, my friend.